as we get you set for the U14 girls final here in this match between Ottawa South United and Brampton SC. Launched in 2014 with the 2001 age group, the Ontario Player Development League, OPDL, is Ontario's first and Canada's foremost standards-based youth high-performance league that combines top-level competition with comprehensive high-performance training standards. This innovative and exciting youth high-performance program is an important standard-bearer of the adoption of long-term player development, LTPD, principles across soccer at large in Ontario and Canada. OPDL encompasses the U13 to U17 age categories for both males and females, which are delivered by 30 committed license holders from Windsor in the West all the way to Ottawa in the East. This program has come to be the pace setter and embodiment of a more refined standards-based high-performance development environment benefiting players coaches, and match officials across Ontario. This weekend marks the long-awaited and hotly contested season finale for the U14, 15, and 17 age groups, as well as the second annual edition of this competition after it was renamed in honor of former Ontario Soccer Director of Soccer Operations, Gary Miller, in 2021. As a friend, mentor, and coach to many generations of Ontario soccer participants, Gary was a pioneer for the modernization of soccer in Canada and staunch advocate for long-term player, coach, and match official development. Nowhere was Gary's influence more critical and impactful than as a member of Ontario soccer's technical advisory committee, which developed the standards for the OPDL launched in 2014. We applaud all finalists of the 2022 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield, who have excelled all season long on and off the pitch and succeeded in the face of adversity to earn a berth at this prestigious event. Good luck and best wishes to all for a tremendous weekend of soccer memories to last a lifetime. Well, we're just moments away from the opening kickoff here in the girls' under-14 final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. And it's going to be Ottawa South United in their road white kits taking on Brampton SC in their home dark kits. As we get the starting lineups and match officials announced. And here in the U14 division, we'll be playing... Four 20-minute quarters, five-minute breaks in between each. As we get you set for the opening kickoff. And a reminder that Toronto FC is the official founding premier partner of Ontario Soccer, as well as the co-presenting partner for the OPDL, the province's Youth High Performance League. Their commitment to the game in Ontario is unrivaled. Visit torontofc.com for tickets and more. The Canadian Premier League, on behalf of its Ontario-based member clubs, Forge FC, York United FC, and Atletico Ottawa, are now premier partners of Ontario soccer and co-presenting partners of the Ontario, Ontario Player Development League. For updates and more information, please go to canpl.ca. And don't forget, today's Gary Miller Charity Shield action is fueled by Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, and refuel. Well, we get the captains from both squads down in front of the ceremonial table and some special guests on hand as well. I noticed Joey Lombardi down pitch side, head coach of the NDC program as they were champions in the Women's League One this year. What a f phenomenal year they had. And I'm sure Joey has his eye on some future talent for that NDC program here in this Girls under 14 final of the Gary Miller Charity Shield. Ottawa South United will wear the white kits, blue shorts, white socks, blue numbering on their back. And Brampton will wear the dark blue kits, white numbers on their back, a little bit of tapered white trimming along the front of the jersey, blue socks, blue shorts. 
will step aside for the playing of the national anthem. It's Ottawa South United, it's Brampton SC, and it's the girls under 14 final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. Opening kickoff coming up next. Well, we had a phenomenal match to kick off the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield in the boys under 15 final earlier this morning when a dramatic and hotly contested intense match between Vaughn SC and Sigma FC saw Vaughn take the 3-1 win. And it was tense. At one point, it was 2-0 Vaughn late in the match. Sigma struck one back. And then Vaughn were able to capitalize moments after it looked like Sigma might equalize. Bit of a funny happening here. Down at pitch side, the Brampton captains all stayed with the match officials for the coin toss. The two Ottawa captains raced off to their team, and now they're pulled back for their captainly duties to take the coin toss. And, well, after this, we can get the action officially underway here. Big shout out to our technical crew behind the scenes, led by our director, Ajit, cameraman, Paul. My name's Nico Cartarelli, providing the play by play commentary for. The 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield live stream action. We are broadcasting live on the Ontario Soccer Twitch channel. Like, subscribe, donate. Make sure you connect with us. Let us know where you're watching, from who you're cheering on. We'll try to get to some viewer shout outs throughout the weekend when we can. As the match officials go over the pre match instructions with the captains and we're just moments away from kickoff here in the girls under 14 final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. Big shout out to all the Ontario soccer staff and volunteers behind the scenes as well. Our fearless leaders in our event squad led by Robin McComb doing a great job. Sandy Slade doing the PA announcing. Tremendous as always. Big shout out to Cam Oliver, our MVP and Robin G, Ben Lungo, leading the communications team behind the scenes, Bjorn Osiak, of course, everyone here at uh, Ontario Soccer, from all our volunteers up to our full-time staff pitching in to make the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield a true success. We're looking forward to having our CEO, Johnny Misley, on hand tomorrow. He's... Up north on business today, but I know he's excited to be in the house tomorrow as we come to you live from the Ontario Soccer Centre Indoor Stadium Fieldhouse. And we're just moments away from the opening kickoff in the girls under 14 final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. We're playing four 20-minute quarters here in this girls under 14 finals as... It's going to be Brampton SC and Ottawa South United to contest for the Charity Shield in the girls under 14 division. 
Our match official crew gets set to take their positions, the teams in their huddles. Big shout out as well to our photographers for today, Quasi and Martin doing a great job as always. Alex Denoya working the Gatorade 10 out front. I tell you, we're all busy, but Alex Denoya might be the busiest man here today because he's giving out free Gatorade and that stuff is going out of style. I tell you, you cannot get a bottle here if you try. Actually, that's not true. There's so much of it. Everyone will get some, but I tell you, he is busy handing that stuff out. But honestly, a big shout out to everyone for making today's and this weekend's event such a success. Here we go. Let's get set for the opening kickoff as it's going to be Brampton getting set to kick us off. They're going to open up with a 4-2-1-3 formation. Probably it'll shift a little bit. Ottawa going with a 4-4-2. As we get set to kick off here, Ava Blinn, the starting keeper for Ottawa. Navrit Brar in goal for Brampton. And we are underway in the girls under 14 final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. It's Brampton working right to left across your screen. In the dark kits, Ottawa South United working left to right across your screen, wearing the white shirts, blue shorts, white socks. And that ball attempted to be played ahead by Danielle Choku, and now she retains possession. And if you've watched any Ontario soccer matches in championship significance over the last few years involving OSU, Ottawa South United, that Choku last name will be familiar to you with her two older sisters in having success, but now Danielle here with the U14s, and now they're pressing on the attack here. Good work there by Billo as she crosses in front, looking for a strike at goal, initially blocked, and then Brampton able to recover defensively with a partial clearance. There's an attempt from distance, and Brar, oh, watch that one go wide to the post. That long shot coming from the OSU captain, Jenny Wan, but unable to put it on net, and... It'll be a Brampton goal kick. They play it short from the goal kick and move it over to Sarah Bowie. Turned over. There's an attempt. And again, oh, Brar mishandles it. And it's it. The flag goes up. It's a goal. OSU capitalize on a misplay by Brampton, both by the defender and the keeper. It slips through the hands of Brar. And OSU take a 1-0 lead in the second minute of action. Wow, that came out of nothing and out of nowhere. And we'll have to get confirmation of the goal score for Ottawa as it looked like an innocent... Sh an innocent... Attempt towards goal, and really, Barr probably should have done better, and we'll see how Brampton respond. one nothing Ottawa. Brampton working the ball out of their midfield now is that pass attempt for Sir Bowie off a Ottawa player, and Brampton will have possession with a throw-in. From the toss. Nearly turned over as both teams pressing, and Choku nearly has it for Ottawa, controlled now by Hanish as she goes back to her keeper in Blinn. Blinn checks her options, pressure towards the keeper. She plays it long, and stepping up for it is Billo. Her ball played forward and met by Elliott for Brampton. Well contested through the midfield, Brampton hold possession is now it's corralled by Sarah Bowie as she takes the space, works off the Attempt from Juan, and now it's controlled by the foot of Cairo. Her through ball, knocked down. Lecky gets a touch in for Brampton as they try working to the attacking side of half. That pass played by Logan, off an Ottawa player, and out for a Brampton throw. From the throw, toss forward, and Noel Gordon nearly came away with it, but Ottawa defend closely and get a clearance up to the half as... Stepping forward is Gibbs. Gibbs pressing, but it's controlled by Ammer. She steps away from the Ottawa attacker. And now Brampton start to work their way up across midfield. 
controlled by Kiero. She actually coughs it up her own, her own side of half, and now it's controlled by Angus. Angus driving wide. Her left foot, there's a shot on, and this time, safe hands by Barr. So the goal has been credited to Angus, Maya Angus for Ottawa, as she puts them on the board in the second minute of action to give OSU a 1-0 lead early on here in the girls' under-14 final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield as they take on Brampton SC, and Brampton have won a throw-in now in front of their own bench. Long throw, headed up by an Ottawa defender. Possession up for grabs, and Brampton will secure it here. Nice control as... Ball played forward by Sir Bowie. It went off the heel of her teammate in Cairo, and it's promptly knocked out for a Brampton throw-in. Sanai Sarah Bowie, she gives a good long toss. As running onto it is Noelle Gordon. She controls it down tight to the goal line. Noelle Gordon trying to fight off the defender, keeps it in. Ball stays in along the touchline. Good work here by Brampton as they try pull it out top now. Lecky, she looks for a switch, controlled. As closed down was Logan. Logan advancing it forward, though. Brampton trying to draw into the attacking third. They have to press back for a moment. Ball up for grabs and contested as Cairo comes away with it. Nice win there through the midfield. And it'll be picked up by Lecky. Brampton continue to press and hold possession. There's a switch attempted by Patterson. Knocked away by OSU as Angus, the goal scorer, makes the pass over to Gibbs. Gibbs gets it back on the second touch, and now Ottawa looking to counter. Nice step over dribble, but then the ball poked away off the foot of Yang, and Brampton trying to work something up the far flank here. Controlled along the line, touch forward, a little bit heavy to get away from Noelle Gordon. She actually does well to make a play of it here as Noelle Gordon fights off the defender, controls the ball, Takes on another defender, nutmegs her, and then the clearance from Choku goes off of Noel Gordon and out for a goal kick. But some nice trickery there by Naya Noel Gordon for Brampton as they try to counter here and look for an equalizer. <laughs> Good crowd on hand once again for this match as. The boys under 15 final probably had close to 500 fans in attendance. This one a little bit less, but they're no quieter, and it's truly not that much less. As Troku makes a good defensive play here to come away with the ball for OSU, but then her pass picked off by Lecky, contested and won by Yang for Ottawa as they try working through the center circle, and now they've got some time to work the near touch line. There's a ball played forward as Gibbs tries to run onto it, defended well, and Brampton look for possession. Is Stocky made the play and wins the throw in for actually the throw, excuse me, goes to Ottawa as it's controlled only for a moment by his Stocky comes away with it. She makes the touch ahead for Noel Gordon, taking on a couple of defenders. Choku tries to stand her tall. Noel Gordon makes the pass to his Stocky. Now it's over and controlled by Patterson. Got around the first challenge, but lost it to Choku on the second attempt. And now Brampton will have it with their back line. Move forward initially by Elliott. They work it up the far flank, and the pass attempt from Logan blocked out, and it'll go for a Brampton throw-in. Oh, no, it's all good. Don't worry about that. There's an attempt from the top of the 18 block, but Noel Gordon comes up with it. Ricochets to a teammate, Brampton pressing. Choku there with a good defensive challenge. Long shot from distance, parried away by a defender. Bit of pinball as Brampton try to push in here. And a nice move that time by Sarah Bowie as she now makes two Ottawa players. And now she brings us into the attacking third. Sarah Bowie pulls back, checks her options. A third deke now supplies a cross, blocked. Keeper's coming off her line. Is Stocky towards the goal, the wild card. And she finishes it. And Brampton equalizes in the ninth minute of action. Two goals in 10 minutes. And Brampton get the equalizer from Naya Noel Gordon. And we're all square, 1-1. One, one. Well, how about that? As Ottawa try a quick kickoff, but they're going to have to wait. 
Noel Gordon responds for Brampton. And in the opening 10 minutes of play, both teams have struck. It's 1-1. And again, the crowd getting active, getting loud. And we'll see if it plays a factor. As there's a hip check provided by Omizi and a foul called against Brampton. So OSU will get a free kick here. And they'll look to send players to the top of the 18. Right now there's five white jerseys, but they play it short. And they now look for a cross in, but the flag goes up and an offside called there. And Brampton play it quickly up the pitch, but it will be secured by the keeper for Ottawa, Ava Blinn. Bowled out, played short from the back line as Choku takes possession now for Ottawa. They'll look to tighten things up after conceding. And you could feel that building. The pressure from Brampton was relentless. And now they try to come up with possession through the midfield, but Gibbs controls for Ottawa, picked off her foot. Nice job by Yuang as she follows through. And now it's controlled in the middle by Angus. She opened the scoring in the second minute of play for Ottawa. And now they're looking to try press in front once again. But for now, pulled back to Choku. Her ball ends up being turned over as now it's controlled by Cairo. Cairo trying to spin off the defender, makes the pass. Pass forward was blocked. Second attempt sees its way through as Noel Gordon, who's got the equalizer for Brampton, starts to dribble her way. But that time closed down and Gibbs gets a good touch in for Ottawa. Billow plays the ball through the center circle where it's controlled by Hanish. She takes a space in front of her, takes a bit of a shove in the back, and that draws a whistle for a free kick. So Ottawa South United will have a set-piece opportunity looking most likely to cross in here a little bit too far out, likely for an attempt on goal, probably close to... 33, 35 yards out, somewhere in that range. It's far enough that the way they're putting six white jerseys across the top of the 18, you'd be looking for a chip-in. Two-player wall to defend. Good strike. Well, there was plenty of power behind that attempt, so making my thought look foolish was Reese K. as she drilled that over top the bar, and we'll keep that in mind for any set pieces going forward, as clearly Ottawa have the Power to strike from distance. Brampton looking for a long-range ball here as his stocky pulls back and takes control. Looking to square up against Hannes. She drops out. And on the outlet, it's turned over. And now here go Ottawa, led by Lofthouse. She takes an attempt from distance and good keeping that time by Brar as she knocked it down and then snagged it before it could track out for a corner. Brampton working through their back for us. Sorobi plays forward. That pass. Nice job by Noel Gordon to use her body to check the defender off the ball. And Brampton still in possession here with Sorobi. She drops back. Cairo, her ball forward, will be intercepted as Kay comes up with it. She plays it through the middle. And it's controlled by Yang. Yang outlets as Lofthouse drops. There's a switch provided. By K, the ball comes into the 18. Bit of miscommunication there between the defender and keeper. And heading it out for the corner was Kiana Logan. So it'll be a corner kick here in the 13th minute of action for OSU. They've got a short option and they use it as it's controlled by Zapavinga. She lays off to the kicker who was Yang. And Yang couldn't quite control it. But now Choku brings it in. Makes a pass intended for Angus. That's blocked. Angus heads it down. Ottawa still in possession. Choku, Lofthouse. Lofthouse being pressured. She plays it back. K, she gets closed down, but finds an outlet there. And Yang. Yang ends up turning it over on that challenge to Logan. She sends it forward for his stocking to run onto. But it's defended well by K. And she did Extra well to keep it in play and got it up the pitch without conceding the throw. And quickly, Ottawa now back in possession. There's a ball. Gibbs trying to track onto it. Sorobi there defensively as she goes back to her keeper. Brar plays it low. Quick touch out by the foot of Ammer. 
contested possession as Angus comes, and now Ottawa have it with Lofthouse. Hanish turns, takes the space. She's hit from behind by a stocky, and that'll be a free kick, much similar to the placement of the last set piece. And having see what, seen what Reese K just did with the last one, well, maybe she will go for target once again here. And Branton will send an extra defender into the wall, acknowledging her power from distance. So, okay, the lone Ottawa player over the ball. Right foot into it, tries to put it on target, but again, a little bit too high. Didn't quite get over top that one enough to hold it down, and it's out for a goal kick. Brar plays it short from the goal kick as the defender, Elliot, had to do well in tight quarters that time, and now it's back to Elliot, and here she plays it up, whereas Stocky will control near midfield. Trying to take on Choku, but a heavy touch from his stocky, and it's out for a throw in. 1 1, 16th minute of action. It's the girls' under 14 final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. Ottawa South United in white, Brampton SC in the dark kits, white numbering. And after Ottawa opened the scoring in the second minute of play on a mishap by the keeper, Brar. Brampton with some sustained pressure and eventually responded about seven minutes later in the ninth minute as the equalizer came from Naya Noel Gordon. Choku clears it up only as far as Lecky, who takes control for Brampton. Is Stocky receiving that pass, tries to turn on Choku as she goes outside. Hard tackle, and that draws a free kick. Choku doesn't like this call. She's got to be careful with the referee here as the match official not wanting to discuss that, and it'll be a free kick for Brampton on that slide tackle challenge. So it'll be a stocky over top of the ball along with Patterson. Patterson started to track away, but now a stocky leaves it. And Isaiah Patterson will get set to take the free kick. Sharp angle, so look for a cross into the penalty area. One player at the near post. There's the ball in. Volleyed on. Partial clearance. And Stocky knocks it forward and puts Brampton in front. Oh, a missed clearance by the OSU back line. And Gabriella is Stocky. Gives Brampton the 2-1 lead in the 17th minute. Well, how about that response from Brampton? After conceding in the second minute to go down 1-0, they have scored twice, two unanswered goals. And in the 18th minute, it's 2-1 Brampton. But here go Ottawa's. That fall, uh, attempt from Yuan was turned over, and now it's controlled by Brampton's Naya Gordon with a huge move. Excuse me, Noel Gordon to make that nutmeg as it's played forward. Naya Noel Gordon getting the fans excited. It's a pro Brampton crowd here as we're coming to you live from the Ontario Soccer Center Stadium in Vaughan on our indoor field house pitch. A very short drive from Brampton to Vaughan, depending on where exactly you live in Brampton. Could be as short as. Well, maybe seven, eight minutes. And they've come out to support their girls here in this final. They're making noise. They've got the drums. They've got the music makers. It's a vibe here, just like we had in the boys' U15 final. And it is a great showcase of soccer here at the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. Ball knocked out of play. It'll be a throw in for OSU. As we approach the end of the first quarter, we're playing four 20-minute quarters, and we're in the 19th minute of action. As Ottawa look to respond now after giving up the lead late here in the quarter. Controlled by Cairo. She tries to dance around Lofthouse, but ends up knocking the back of her feet and taking her down. It'll be a free kick now for OSU. And keep an eye on Reese K to potentially once again 
put this on target. This one a little bit further out, and given the power she's shown, maybe a little further out will help her put it more on net. She puts the right foot into the ball. That's going to be tricky and a good save there as Navri Par confidently punches that one out. And she's getting better and better each time she's been tested after that opening minute gaff. Brar has now been tested a couple of times in that. Probably her best save of this match yet. Corner kick here for Ottawa. Good cross in. Headed by Hanish, but no one there in white. And that'll allow Brampton to clear it out to the half. Choku charges in, and that one hits the rafters above. First time this weekend. We should have a... We should have a charity pot for that. If you hit the rafters, you have to donate a quarter or something. So possession will come here to Brampton. As they'll restart play. Kick taken by Elliott. She knocks it forward, and Kay's going to have to make a defensive decision here for Ottawa. And she takes the safest route possible, knocking it out for a throw-in. Quick throw taken. Bit of a misclearance. Is Stocky trying to take on Shaku? Is Stocky taking the ground, but nothing doing there. And a free kick awarded to Ottawa. So we await the quarter buzzer and whistle as we'll have a short five-minute break. And then we'll get you set for the second quarter of action. As a reminder... Well, we'll get to that in a moment as Ottawa played short from the goal uh, free kick, excuse me, and it was a bit of a dangerous cross in front of their own goal, but now easily controlled through the midfield. Possession turned over. Brampton try hold it. That ball just crosses the touchline, and it'll go out for a throw in for Brampton. Surabo, he gets set to take the throw. Tosses in, and there's the whistle for the quarter break. So, after 20 minutes of play, it's 2-1 Brampton in the girls' under-14 final. And Ontario soccer values fair play, and we share this common passion with our partners from Respect and Sport, the leading e-learning platform for the prevention of it bullying, abuse, harassment, and discrimination. Two teams... Two nets, that ball, and a love of everything between the lines. But the game is more. The game is you giving every last breath to finish the sprint. The game is that last ounce of strength that pours out of you as you stretch to save your team. The game is questioning yourself over and over again until you find a way forward. Your personal best today is your challenge for tomorrow. Giving everything now is only knowing how much further you can go. The laces we tighten are the ones that bind us together. Entering the huddle as a player and leaving as a team. Play because you love it. Inspire because it's in you. Unite because it's in us. Ontario Soccer. here today at the uh, community check-in with our partners from SportCheck and Respect in Sport and having a great time with uh, 35 kids from our community. I'm just here to help out with the kids today while they were playing soccer during their boot camp and learning about everything they were learning about. A core value in sport which is respect, understanding respect with players that you're playing against, with your teammates, with your coaches, with the refs and with the audience is extremely important. Our part in it is the Respect in Sport program for parents. The Respect in Sport Parent Program, it's a 60-minute program, costs 12 bucks, it's completed online, and it just brings you onto the same page about these issues so that you can contribute to a positive and safe experience for your kids and for the rest of the people alongside you. Parents should attend the respectful play because they're involved in the games too. It's, it's a big part of the game and we need to respect everybody, especially the referees and everybody on the field. If you take the courses, you start to understand that your words have an impact on the players especially. I think all of these community events are just phenomenal opportunities for the children to become a little more 
acquainted with the true values that they need to have. And as a parent, I've also learned how to be more respectful with regards to other parents on the sidelines, referees, and as well as coaches. Well, my favorite part of today it was meeting Dwayne. Dwayne, of course, is a legend of the Canadian game. Uh, and he had some uh, great wisdom to uh, impart on the uh, young players. Respect in sport is important because it teaches a lot of aspects of respect. Respect of time, respect of teammates, respect of community, respect for yourself, and respect for your surroundings. And I think sport is a great vehicle to teach respect at all, all aspects, all levels, and no one's ever too old to learn about respect. Respect in sport means sportsmanship and even when a dirty play or anything gets you down you can get back up and then just treat the other players like, like nothing happened basically. Uh, respect means to me is uh, always being nice to people and treat people the way you want to be treated. Respect in sport, Sport Check and Ontario Soccer did a phenomenal job today um, at bringing all of the players and parents um, together to understand a little bit better. You know, if you hit a player down, you come, you pick him back up and, and you have a respectful handshake and you go on and that's how we play. There is something quite magical about heading into a new destination. A journey into the unknown. Not alone, but together, as a country, as a sport, ready to soar. We are Canada, and this is our sport. This is our time. I'm Lizzie and I'm 11 years old. I play for Markham FC and I'm an attacking midfielder. My favorite thing about soccer is learning new tricks and trying them on the field. Today I'm going to be showing you the SRP move. Let's go. Step one is to cross the ball over with your weak foot. Number two, step over the ball with your dominant foot. Step three is to pull the ball back with your weak foot. Step four is to chop the ball behind your weak foot with your dominant foot. And finally, explode with the ball down the field. Now that you know all the steps, try the SRP move for yourself. My proudest soccer moment was when I made the Markham OPDL team. If you're trying to learn new tricks, be creative and don't give up. All right, soccer fans, let's welcome you back for the second quarter of action here in the girls under 14 final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. And what an opening quarter it was with Brampton going down early, but then storming back. And as we begin the second quarter, the score is two for Brampton, one for OSU. Brampton working right to left across your screens in the dark kits, OSU in the white shirts, blue shorts, working left to right, and they're pressing here, trying to start the quarter again with a impact, but there's Estocki with a good dummy, and she comes away with it for Brampton. Estocki plays the ball forward. K. she has to go back to her keeper, and the Ottawa keeper, Blinn, nearly gives it away as Estocki tries to control it, but it'll be knocked out of touch by the defender, Elliot. Excuse me, by Kent and out for a Brampton throw. Tossed in as Brampton try, hold possession, controlled there by Patterson. And after she got around the first defender, she loses it to her numerical counterpart in Lofthouse as Ottawa take possession across midfield. The ball played forward intended for Angus. Brampton have to make a play here defensively, and it's given away. Angus, her volley attempt blocks, ricochets to a teammate, and there's Brar with a big save on Araya. So Saren Araya, who has come in here in the second quarter as a substitute for Ottawa, the chance fell to her, but Brar making a big save for Brampton. Angus unable to corral the ball after it ricocheted to her, and now Estaki has it for Brampton. As she looks to switch one over to the far flank with Omizi running onto it. Omizi takes control, defended closely, and knocked for the corner by Zapavinga. 
So good end-to-end -end action here in the second quarter. As Brampton set up for what looks like will be an outswinger. Six attacking jerseys into the penalty area as Patterson gets set to take the outswinger corner. Delivers a good cross in. Ball falls to a teammate as getting a touch to it was lucky. Appeals that it went off an Ottawa defender, but it's out for a goal kick. So Blinn will get set to take the goal kick now for Brand uh, Ottawa as she plays it short for Choku. Isabel and Annabelle Choku, Danielle's two older sisters in action tomorrow as Danielle showing some good footwork there. And what a family that Ottawa South United have found. A bit of miscommunication there between the defender and keeper. And this could be threatening now as Angus takes it. She couldn't corral it for a shot. Angus was supplying the pressure. Ammer wanted her keeper, Bra, to come off her line and take it, but very surprised that Ammer didn't make the defensive play herself. And in the end, Brampton able to breathe a little easier as it's knocked out for an Ottawa throw-in. Hanish gets the touch forward for OSU as Angus contesting there against Elliott, and it's off of Elliott out for an Ottawa throw-in. Tossed into the penalty area as you uh, check that that's Yang in possession. Lofthouse with the shot. Brower makes the save. And then she quickly scoops up the rebound after paring down the initial attempt. Balled out and now it's controlled by Sorobi as she gets closed down. Cairo's pass picked off. Controlled only for a minute by Araya. Lofthouse crashes in to take possession. Draws back. There's a shot. And there's an equalizer. What a goal. Stepping into that with power and precision. Cindy Yang equalizes for OSU. On a shot outside the 18. And it's 2-2 in the 25th minute of action. What a goal by Yang. No chance for the keeper bra on that one. Foul committed by Ottawa. Free kick conceded here to Brampton as the kick taken quickly by Lecky. She tries to pick out a teammate in Omizi. That ball turned over. And it'll be Brampton that try work possession for it, only to have it returned by OSU and knocked out for a Brampton throw in. Really tightly contested final here in the girls' under-14 championship match of the Gary Miller Charity Shield. Sorobi, she tosses back as Ammer. Plays back for her keeper, Brar. Clearance only as far as Lofthouse. Lecky. Sorobi. Almost picked off her foot. She keeps it in play there. And now tries to turn the defender up the line in Menard. And a foul committed by Menard. And a free kick now for Brampton. As we get a little bit of jawing underneath us as well. And a caution issued on the play to Menard for Ottawa. So Danica Menard draws the first caution of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. And the 26th minute of action of the girls under 14. The final. Continuing to jaw at each other right now are Gracie Kent and Gabriella Stocky. And if you're Kent, you definitely want to stay tight to Stocky as Stocky tries to keep it in along the line. And she's been a catalyst up front for Branton, making impactful plays leading to both goals. Loose ball controlled now by Ottawa. They turn it over to Lackey. Controlled as Omizi tried to turn with it. Battle for possession. Ottawa secure it. Lofthouse has it picked off her foot, but she's able to knock it back to a teammate. And now it's controlled by Menard. 
Menard's pass picked off by Patterson. And his stocky opens up some space. Kay closes her down from an angle, but does well not to commit a foul. And now Yang, who's got the equalizer for Ottawa, makes the play through midfield. Lofthouse tries the pass ahead for Angus. Ricochets its way over to Araya. Her return pass intended for Angus picked off. But there's Hanish to control for Ottawa. Hanish drops back, now controlled by Angus. Heavy first touch, and that turns possession over as his stocky turns out wide and tries to send a ball forward for Omizi to run onto. But Choku gets there defensively for Ottawa, plays it to the line, and that's out for a Brampton throw in. The Brampton fans starting to drum a little louder, trying to urge their girls forward and in an attempt to push them back in front. As Brampton have trailed, they've tied, and they've led in this match. There's a bit of a scrum happening in the crowd right now. Ball played in front as it's cleared by Ottawa. Only as far as Lecky after the corner. There's a shot attempt by Patterson gets blocked. Volley attempt from distance. His stocky tried to come up with it. Cairo has it now. She makes the pass over to his stocky. Tried to tur uh, turn it for Noel Gordon. His stocky playing from the turf, and she concedes a free kick there to Ottawa. So it seems like cooler heads have prevailed in the crowd below us as things started to get a little. Interesting there. Good move by a stocky shot attempt block. She appeals for a handball. It was close. There's an attempt from wide and from long range, and it just goes wide as it went off the foot of Cairo. But you can understand the appeals from his stocky as it may have been ball to hand, but it certainly looked like contact was made on the defensive block. Angus has it now for Ottawa. She tries to turn up the pitch with it. Good defending here, and coming away with it is Logan as she drops back. But Angus closing down and making life difficult for Elliot. Elliot plays it off of Angus and out for a goal kick. And an opportunity for us to remind you that Canada Soccer have marked the 50-day countdown to the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 with the introduction of the hashtag we can collective a user generated digital movement that gives fans a voice and a role to join our players and team at Qatar 2022 Brampton breaking forward here as Noel Gordon comes up with it steps over the ball has the overlap option and uses it in Sirobi Sirobi into the penalty area takes on Choku tries to cross it's out for a corner kick Well, as I was saying, hashtag we can collective is a user generated digital movement that gives fans a voice and role to join our players and team at Qatar 2022 as a bilingual national campaign under Canada Soccer's We Can signature. Use the following hashtags, hashtag W-E-C-A-N, hashtag O-U-I-C-A-N. To learn more, visit CanadaSoccer.com. Patterson delivers the cross in from the corner, contested by both squads and Lighthouse excuse me, Lofthouse, able to get it clear with the volley. Brampton try push it back in, but the pass off mark, and it's out for a throw-in. Lofthouse heads it back from the throw as Noel Gordon comes in to take possession, and it's Nicked out by Gracie Kent and a throw-in for Brampton, which is taken quickly as his stocky tries to track that one to the goal line, but unable to catch it. It's out for a goal kick. We're going to have a substitution coming here for Brampton as Smith gets set to come into this match. And for the time being, Omizi will head to the bench. She's had supplied really good pace up that far flank Omizi showing her impact throughout points. And she was a big part of one of the two goals for Brampton. That's now Ottawa. Well, they've only led at one point. It was in the opening second minute of play when they went up 1-0. And the lead only lasted about seven minutes before Brampton tied. At the time, 1-1. Brampton would push in front 2-1. 
before Ottawa would equalize once again as that ball out for a goal kick. And here in the 32nd minute of action in the under-14 girls final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield, in this match between Ottawa South United and Brampton SC, we are all square 2-2 as a nice move along the far touchline, but then losing possession there was Logan, and it's a throw-in for Ottawa. Cindy Yang equalizing here in this second quarter for Ottawa to make it a 2-2 game. As Angus, who got the goal back in the second minute, tried to flick on, but now it's controlled by Noelle Gordon. She tries to turn her player inside out. Noelle Gordon equalizing for Brampton at that point when it was 1-1. And there's his stocky as she plays the ball forward, but her touch off the mark, and then it's cleared out for a Brampton throw. And if I remember correctly, Estaki got the other goal for Brampton. And that's all the scoring. Two goals apiece. It's 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, Iman Amir. Nice move, but her pass then picked off, and now Hanish has it for Ottawa. Good ball to pick out Angus, but she's closed down immediately, and it's turned over. And here goes Patterson. Patterson trying to take on the defender. Last touch was blocked, and now Yang has it for Ottawa. Good work by Araya to step in and take control, but she got close down from behind, not realizing the pressure was there. And now Patterson plays a bar up the far flank where Smith tries to run onto that ball, and it's off of Smith and out for an Ottawa throw. Good defending that time by Danielle Choku. Lecky knocks it out. It'll go as another Ottawa throw in. This time, Choku gets set to take the throw. Long toss working the line. It's headed back towards Choku. And Brampton move it forward as Patterson controls through the center circle. She was pressured and has to play back to Cairo as they move the ball quickly. Cairo got it back from Patterson and Good ball movement here by Brampton to work an attack along the flank. Nutmeg provided by Surabowie, but she couldn't quite return to the ball before it was knocked out by Kay for a Brampton throw. Lots of good touches, lots of trickery, lots of skill on display here in the girls' under-14 final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. Surabowie with the throw. Over top the head of Leckie as it's controlled now by Araya. And she tries to turn on the Jets, pulls back away from Leckie. Yang looks for an overlap, picks out Lofthouse. Lofthouse tries to take through space, and then her long left-footed shot. Not enough on it to challenge the keeper bra, and an easy save that time. Hey, buddy. Ball played back in front of the Brampton goal. Dangerously, Ottawa trying to press here as Araya on the back of Correa as Lofthouse takes that shot, but that one never threatening target, and it's out for a goal kick. Well, you'd like to see Brampton be a little bit more tight defensively with the ball in their own back third, and they get fortunate that time not to create a costly error other than the shot from Lofthouse that went wide. Brar from the goal kick. Again, just got to tighten up there that possession as it's controlled by Elliott. And now they work their way through the midfield with the short passes, but Ottawa able to snuff it out and quickly hammer it back into the defensive third where Elliott has to knock it out for an Ottawa throw-in. So let's see if Ottawa can start to press here. As Choku gets set to take the throw in. Choku calling for movement off the ball. The Ottawa players start their runs. A substitution for Brampton, which is why they'll have to retake the throw in as Una Mwango coming into the match and Noel. Gordon out for the time being. Ottawa working into the penalty area from the throw. Angus couldn't quite control. There it's hammered on a one-time touch by Kent. And an easy save for the keeper, Brar. She bowls it out for Ammer. 
Suraboe. Cairo pressured by Lofthouse. Lofthouse comes away with it, draws the left footed shot, and it had some nice curl, but not enough power to challenge the keeper, and an easy save there for Brar. Rolling into the 38th minute of action as we approach the second quarter break, the half break. We're playing four 20 minute quarters in this one, and a free kick here for Ottawa. Lofthouse. Kent, back to K. Controlled by Blinn. Oh, Choku misreads it. This could be danger. Shot attempt, Blinn with the save as Aiden Smith generated the chance for Brampton. But as Smith was falling to the ground, she never quite got everything on the shot. And the save by Blinn secures possession for Ottawa. That could have been... Another goal created by another defensive miscue. But that time, Blinn there to backstop OSU. As Yang tries to fight off the challenge through midfield, nothing doing. As Kay comes up with it for Ottawa. Lofthouse fights off the challenge from Patterson. Lofthouse with a good through ball. Araya has to stop and track back into the middle. Can't get around the defensive challenge in Ammer. And now that pass from Lofthouse out wide for a Brampton throw-in. From the throw. Immediately closed down by Angus. Brampton will take another toss. This time Leckie can't quite control. And Yang takes possession. Yang spins off the defensive challenge. The ball ricochets as it's hammered up the field by Logan. It's stocky with an initial touch. And now Cairo has it go off her hand. And a free kick now for Ottawa. And again, even though this is from quite a distance, don't put it past Gracie K. Uh, excuse me, Reese K to put this on target. Brampton unsure about how they want to defend this set piece, and now the match official will call the two players in the vicinity off the ball, and now K gets set to take the kick. This time chipping towards the back post, one bounce in on goal, and Brar had a bit of a juggle with it, but was able to secure it before any white jersey could get a touch forward. Speaking of touch forward, there's good press by Ottawa as the ball played in for Angus, but immediately closed down, and that one knocked out for an Ottawa throw-in. Today's OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield action is fueled by Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, and refuel during halftime. As we're just moments away from the halftime whistle, and we're all squared up 2-2 in the girls under 14 final at the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. As Gabriella is stocky, she gets pulled back and a free kick now for Brampton. Now we'll see if they can find something to push in front late here in the second quarter. Time is up. Elliot, good Boot on the ball, but too far as a cross and not threatening enough to Blinn to make it a difficult save. And the Ottawa keeper easily stops it. And now she plays it out with the drop kick and we get the halftime whistle. So, folks, at the break, it's Ottawa to Brampton to stay tuned. Third quarter coming up next at the Gary Miller Charity Shield girls under 14 final. It begins with a ball. Two teams. Two nets, that ball, and a love of everything between the lines. But the game is more. The game is you giving every last breath to finish the sprint. The game is that last ounce of strength that pours out of you as you stretch to save your team. The game is questioning yourself over and over again until you find a way forward. Your personal best today is your challenge for tomorrow. Giving everything now is only knowing how much further you can go. The laces we tighten are the ones that bind us together. Entering the huddle as a player and leaving as a team. Play because you love it. Inspire because it's in you. Unite because it's in us. Ontario Soccer.
here today at the uh, community check-in with our partners from SportCheck and Respect in Sport and having a great time with uh, 35 kids from our community. I'm just here to help out with the kids today while they were playing soccer during their boot camp and learning about everything they were learning about. A core value in sport, which is respect. Understanding respect with players that you're playing against, with your teammates, with your coaches, with the refs, and with the audience is extremely important. Our part in it is the Respect in Sport program for parents. The Respect in Sport parent program, it's a 60 minute program, costs 12 bucks, it's completed online, and it just brings you onto the same page about these issues so that you can contribute to a positive and safe experience for your kids and for the rest of the people alongside you. Parents should attend the respectful play because they're involved in the games too. It, it's, it's a big part of the game and we need to respect everybody, especially the referees and everybody on the field. If you take the courses, you start to understand that your words have an impact on the players especially. I think all of these community events are just phenomenal opportunities for the children to become a little more acquainted with the true values that they need to have. And as a parent, I've also learned how to be more respectful with regards to other parents on the sidelines, referees, and as well as coaches. Well, my favorite part of today it was meeting Dwayne. Dwayne, of course, is a legend of the Canadian game. Uh, and he had some uh, great wisdom to uh, impart on the uh, young players. Respect in sport is important because it teaches a lot of aspects of respect. Respect of time, respect of teammates, respect of community, respect for yourself, and respect for your surroundings. And I think sport is a great vehicle to teach respect at all, all aspects, all levels, and no one's ever too old to learn about respect. Respect in sport means sportsmanship, and even when a dirty play or anything gets you down, you can get back up and then just treat the other players like, like nothing happened, basically. Uh, respect means to me is uh, always being nice to people and treat people the way you want to be treated. The respect in sport, Sport Check and Ontario Soccer did a phenomenal job today um, at bringing all of the players and parents um, together to understand a little bit better. You know, if you hit a player down, you come, you pick him back up and, and you have a respectful handshake and you go on and that's how we play. There is something quite magical about heading into a new destination. A journey into the unknown. Not alone, but together as a country, as a sport, ready to soar. We are Canada and this is our sport. This is our time. I'm Lizzie and I'm 11 years old. I play for Markham FC and I'm an attacking midfielder. My favorite thing about soccer is learning new tricks and trying them on the field. Today I'm gonna to be showing you the SRP move. Let's go. Step one is to cross the ball over with your weak foot. Number two, step over the ball with your dominant foot. Step three is to pull the ball back with your weak foot. Step four is to chop the ball behind your weak foot with your dominant foot and finally explode with the ball down the field. Now that you know all the steps, try the SRP move for yourself. My proudest soccer moment was when I made the Markham OPDL team. If you're trying to learn new tricks, be creative and don't give up. Hi, my name is Fatlam and I'm 20 years old. I play five-a-side soccer for North Mississauga Soccer Club and I'm a forward. Today I'm going to teach you speed, dribble and change direction tricks. Step 1. Dribble the ball forward. Step 2. Place the inside of the foot and outside of the ball. Step 3. Turn your body towards the direction that you're going. Step 4. Continue to dribble. My proudest moment is when we won the gold medal in Paris Sports with North Mississauga Soccer Club. My favorite thing about playing soccer is that like, I feel myself when I'm in the field. My advice to the player that want to learn cool tricks is keep trying, don't give up. 
Hey, I'm Melissa and I'm 13 years old. I play for UMSC and I'm a striker. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to do the Neymar dance. All right, soccer fans, let's get you set for the third quarter kickoff as you're tuned in to the girls under 14 final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. And a big thank you to Ontario soccer partner Soccer Express for their first class support. As Canada's premier soccer apparel and equipment dealer, Soccer Express has everything needed to take your game to the next level. Visit SoccerX.com to check out the latest gear from Adidas, Nike, Puma, Admiral, and more. OSU will work right to left across your screen now, and they'll kick us off to begin the third quarter of action. Brampton defending the goal to our left, working left to right. And here we go, third quarter underway as we're all square 2-2 two, two, to begin the second half of play in the girls' under-14 final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. Brampton taking possession there with Omizi. She tries to pick out his stocky with the pass. It ricochets its way back to Omizi, and now she'll try work it in possession with Cairo. Oh, nearly turned over as Angus applying the pressure, but now it's controlled and taking it forward is Logan. She threads the needle and makes a good pass over to Noel Gordon, who finds the runner in Omizi, and she's immediately closed down by Kay as Ottawa can see the corner here for Brampton. So Kiana Logan gets set to take the corner kick. Uh, it looks like she's setting up potentially for an outswing. Oh, excuse me. It's a throw-in. I thought it was a corner. My apologies. Headed forward and right on goal where it's snagged by Blinn. And heck, that throw-in might as well have been a corner because it was just as threatening. So good work by Brampton from the throw-in deep in the attacking third to generate a chance on target. And now Ottawa have it through the midfield as Araya tries to play forward. Lofthouse steps over and looks for an option as she tries to reverse momentum and the pace of play, but in turn turns possession over to Brampton and Lofthouse quickly gets it back after the pass from Mistaki was intercepted. Gibbs tries to knock forward for Angus, but defending it and closing it down is Elliot. Elliot Forced to play it here by Angus, and she does well to fight off the Ottawa attacker and playing it up the line for a throw-in. So nice work there by Soleil Elliott to handle the challenge presented by Maya Angus. Ottawa looking to generate from the throw. Hanish, bit of a poor first touch in that goes out for a goal kick. So Brar will get set to take the goal kick here for Brampton. And after conceding in the second minute of play, she settled in nicely, making a couple of good stops. No chance for Brar on the second Ottawa goal on that shot from Yang. And now Lofthouse takes it for Ottawa. She makes the pass over to Araya. That's immediately closed down. Noelle Gordon can't dribble her way out of traffic. And it's controlled by Angus. As Angus takes it towards the corner, left-footed cross in challenged. And Brampton get a partial clearance. Lofthouse, she takes a crack at it. And her attempt just went wide at target as it was dipping and curling wide of the post. But Naomi Lofthouse continues to generate opportunities in that attacking midfielder role for Ottawa. Nice work there by Omizi as she takes the ball away. Check that. That was actually Logan making the defensive play for Brampton. As now they get the ball up towards the half where Stocky battles for it, but quickly... Kicked forward by K. Sarah Bowie now back for Ammer. Makes the touch into the middle for Lecky. Her long ball as running onto it with pace is Omizi. And Choku had to hustle back and put her body on the line to clear the danger with the pressing Omizi on her back. 
Those two continue to have a great one-on-one -on -one battle here today, and that time Choku getting the better of the Brampton striker. Again, really good crowd on hand for today's match in the girls' under-14 final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. Definitely a few hundred fans in attendance here at the Ontario Soccer Centre Fieldhouse. As Brampton look for an option from the throw, Noelle Gordon tries to take it down out of midair. She controls. Defender on her, laying it back. Sura Bowie steps around the first challenge. She gets clapped into nothing doing, and now Ottawa works the ball ahead for Gibbs, and they could be looking for a counter here as Gibbs plays it ahead intended for Angus, but Elliott there defensively for Brampton, and now Angus picks it off her foot. Maya Angus, her initial cross attempt, Stopped in its tracks, and then only a partial clearance by Elliott, as it's controlled now by Lofthouse. Araya trying to step around the defender, but on the move, loses the ball. Luckily, ricochets to Billow. Araya tries to touch back for the defensive teammate who is pinching forward, and now it's controlled by Brampton. That's through the midfield. On the ball is Una Mwango, as she plays that one off to a teammate. And now it's controlled through the back line with Elliott. Knocked forward as Noel Gordon tries to track it, but Kay gets there first for Ottawa. As we approach the 45th minute of action, and that ball tracks out for a Brampton throw-in. Long toss there from Suraboe as Hanish gets a touch for Ottawa and they control it here with Lofthouse. Angus chips over for Araya. She tries to take on the defender. Araya turns inside, makes the pass intended for Gibbs, but immediately closed down by Suraboe. And now Brampton have it ahead with his stocky. She does well to knock it forward, but they can't control after the stocky pass. And now Ottawa. Trying to press back into the attacking side of midfield, but Cairo comes away with it. And now Brampton looking for a quick break attack, but Noel Gordon had gotten crossed up and stopped her run. And in the end, the ball knocked out a touch for a Brampton throw. Suraboe with the toss, evades the first defender, contested as Noel Gordon gets a touch to his stocky. She tries to work tight to the boundary, and that's knocked out by the Ottawa defender in K, and it'll be a throw-in for Brampton. Now we saw from their last throw-in on the near sideline, deep in the attacking third, they generated a bit of a ricochet opportunity. Let's see what they do here. Suraboe tosses, Noel Gordon contesting for possession. Knocked away as far as Lecky. She plays a left-footed ball forward. Choku knocks it down. And then Danielle Choku puts a good ball forward, clearing it on the volley. Ottawa trying to contest for possession here with Angus on the ball, but it's defended well by Elliott. And now Brampton move it to their keeper, Brar, by way of Logan. Brar being closed down by Gibbs. She plays it back out to Logan. Evades the challenge from Angus, and now Brar knocks it out with the right foot. Noel Gordon, good touch. As Elliott plays forward, and now it's controlled by Omizi. Choku stepped up, ricochets to his stocky. She gets hauled down, but it's going to be an offside call, and the Brampton fans think they have won a free kick, but they're not going to get a free kick. It's an offside, and possession will go to Ottawa. And now the Brampton fans start to realize, and it goes from cheers to jeers. But the right call made there. Good job by the match officiating crew to pick out the player in the offside position. And all oh, from the free kick turned over, and that's a clear-cut foul. And Choku will be lucky not to receive anything more than just a free kick conceded, as you could easily caution there with just one other defender back. Danielle Choku had no choice but to commit the foul. Otherwise, Omizi would have been in all alone. And now Brampton get a free kick here. There's four players 
surrounding the, the ball, a four-player wall stands defensively. 48th minute of action. I have no idea who's going to take this kick. Probably a stocky. Fake on the first attempt. Estaki lets it fly. Not sure why she kicked that when there was clear encroachment. She could have just stood there and let Juan get whistled, but Yuan charges forward. It was never touched by the first player from Brampton and Logan. And in the end, a wasted free kick. It's out for a goal kick. Played short by Ottawa from the goal kick, but immediately pressing. And things are starting to get chippy here in the girls' under-14 final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. As Chiamaka Omizi gets whistled for that shoulder into the defender of K. And a free kick coming here for Ottawa. They take it quickly as it's knocked forward by Elliott. Omizi draws back as it's controlled by Unumuango. Unumuango's pass picked off. As Hanish moves it forward, intended for Yuan, but her attempt turned over, and now Noel Gordon has it racing forward for Brampton. Noel Gordon closed down from behind, loses possession. Hanish tries the clearance. It goes off of Cairo, tracks towards the touchline, but it's kept in by Gibbs. And now Cairo tracking back, cuts off her lane, and possession turned over. Cairo spins off the defensive challenge. But Gibbs able to come away with it. And then a foul committed by Cairo. And a free kick here for Ottawa. And the referee wants to have a word with both the Ottawa and Brampton player. And this gives us a chance to remind you that both TFC and CPL are vital. Aspirational D... Uh, excuse me. Both TFC and CPL are vital aspirational destinations along the talented pathway. TFC, through its TFC Academy, is a pinnacle club soccer destination for aspiring male professional soccer players in our province. Good kick taken, but coming off her line is Brar, and she scoops it up for Brampton. The CPL is Canada's top-tier men's domestic professional league, represented in Ontario by its member clubs, Forge FC, York United FC, and Atletico Ottawa, provides important player development opportunities for over 150 Canadian players many of whom come from Ontario. End-to-end -end action. There's a good through ball. Noel Gordon runs onto it, takes the shot. What a save, big rebound. It's Stocky. Oh, two huge saves. Ava Blinn stands tall in goal for Ottawa. And after a tremendous first save, her second one equally as good. The first shot taken by Noel Gordon, the second by Estaki, and then the drop click kick by the keeper Blinn into the rafters, and it'll be possession to Ottawa to restart. Ball turned over as the kick goes immediately to Unumuango as she tries to take on a couple of defenders. Unumuango takes it deep into the corner, pulls back, Checks her options, finds one in Logan, and that ball out of play for a Brampton throw. Very impressed by the pace of play from both of these teams. There's been no let up here. Loose ball contested as Angus comes away with it for Ottawa. Tries to spin away from Logan, takes a lot of contact, nothing doing. And then her pass off of Lucky out for an Ottawa throw. 52nd minute of action. Ottawa 2, Brampton 2. It's the under-14 girls final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. You're tuned into the Ontario Soccer live stream. We're broadcasting live on Twitch. As Brampton moved the ball into the penalty area from the throw, Choku with a last-second clearance to... Escape the danger and the pressure being provided by Brampton. And it feels like the ball's been pinned in here by Brampton for the last few minutes. As Noel Gordon lays it off. Ammer. She gets closed down by Yuan, but does well to fight through that challenge. Noel Gordon knocked it back to Ammer, who once again has to deal with Yuan. 
And now Ottawa have it ahead on the attacking side of half with Gibbs. Gibbs running towards it, but closed down and now controlled by Brampton. They quickly give possession away, though, as Lofthouse, her touch forward, knocked back. Choku tries to take it. She volleys that up the pitch. No one there in white, and that's out for a Brampton throw in. Only about six minutes until the half, uh, third quarter break. As we're playing four 20 minute quarters here in the girls' under 14 final. And if we remain tied after the final whistle, we go straight to penalty kicks. But the way this game's going, I think you got to expect more offense and more goals to come. As the Brampton fans wanted to see a free kick awarded to Unamuango, but nothing doing. And it'll be a throw in now for Brampton. But first, they'll make a substitution as Una Moango will come out of the match and she'll be replaced by Patterson. Well, some confusion here as to whether this substitution's happening or not. It's the wrong player they wanted to pull off. They want to pull off Cairo instead of Una Moango. And Patterson now back into the match. So the substitution completed and a throw in to come here for Brampton from the toss. Flick to the top of the 18, appeals for a handball, nothing doing. As no call, the right call. And Patterson tries to chip back, but now it's cleared up across half and out for a Brampton throw in. From the toss, contested, and it'll be secured by Araya for Ottawa. Araya on to the attacking side of half dribbles, makes the pass ahead for Huan as she tries to find Gibbs with that ball, but defended by Sorobi and knocked out for a corner kick. So Ottawa, who have been on the defensive side of this much of this quarter, will now have an offensive sequence to come with a corner kick. And they'll send Madison Billow over to take it. One short option presenting for the moment. Billow takes the corner. In swinger. Drops to the far corner of the box. Headed on by Angus. Punched away. Only as far as you want. Knocked. Pinballed around. And then volleyed away on the defensive effort. Oh, that was a tense moment for Brampton. But... Between a big save by Barrar and then a good defensive clearance, I believe Elliot got there for the defensive clearance. It was stopped and the pressure cleared. The opportunity there for Ottawa cleared away by the defender as stepping into it was... Iman Ammer for Brampton, and here in the 57th minute, Ottawa looking to generate some offense after they created a goal mouth scramble from a corner kick, and now they have themselves a free kick and a chance to play across into the penalty area from the set piece. As Reese Kay, Reese Kay gets set to take the free kick. Ottawa putting Six white jerseys to the near side of the penalty area. One on the far. Kate takes the cross in. Lofthouse in the area. She has a second knock. And she plays it. Beautiful goal by Naomi Lofthouse. And Ottawa South United are back in front. It's 3-2 to two in the 58th minute of action. Well, the ball fell to Lofthouse, and when she volleyed that, there was no chance for the keeper, Brar, to make the save. And Lofthouse gives Ottawa their second lead of the match, first since the second minute when they opened up the scoring. That one, though, what a goal by Lofthouse, as she buried it on the volley from inside the penalty area. 
And again, after just missing on a goal mouse scramble from a corner kick, from a set-piece cross into the penalty area, this time Ottawa capitalize, and they're back in front 3-2. to two. Brampton, however, pressing now as his stock. He tries to win it back from Kay. She supplied that cross from the free kick. Glynn comes off her line for the clearance. Leckie steps up and advances it over to Patterson. She takes on the first defender, and after beating the initial challenge from Kent, she lost the ball, and now it's controlled by Araya ahead for Ottawa. As Araya takes it forward, she's got a bit of space in front of her, but is immediately closed down by Logan. And Kiana Logan there for the defensive stop for Brampton. There's more than a few Logan shirts in the crowd tonight. She's had a good cheering section come out. Another incredible turnout of fans for this match. As we're probably in and around the 400 fans in attendance areas. That throw in proved to be threatening enough that Soleil Elliott had to clear it out for a corner kick. So let's see what Ottawa can do with this corner kick. They pushed in front moments ago from a free kick that came moments after a corner. But there's the break for the quarter. And at the end of the quarter, after three, it's Ottawa South United three, Brampton two. Folks, stay tuned. Fourth quarter action coming up next. It begins with a ball. Two teams. Two nets, that ball, and a love of everything between the lines. But the game is more. The game is you giving every last breath to finish the sprint. The game is that last ounce of strength that pours out of you as you stretch to save your team. The game is questioning yourself over and over again until you find a way forward. Your personal best today is your challenge for tomorrow. Giving everything now is only knowing how much further you can go. The laces we tighten are the ones that bind us together. Entering the huddle as a player and leaving as a team. Play because you love it. Inspire because it's in you. Unite because it's in us. Ontario Soccer. here today at the uh, community check-in with our partners from SportCheck and Respect in Sport and having a great time with uh, 35 kids from our community. I'm just here to help out with the kids today while they were playing soccer during their boot camp and learning about everything they were learning about. A core value in sport which is respect, understanding respect with players that you're playing against, with your teammates, with your coaches, with the refs and with the audience is extremely important. Our part in it is the Respect in Sport program for parents. The Respect in Sport Parent Program, it's a 60-minute program, costs 12 bucks, it's completed online, and it just brings you onto the same page about these issues so that you can contribute to a positive and safe experience for your kids and for the rest of the people alongside you. Parents should attend the Respectful Play because they're involved in the games too. It's, it's a big part of the game and we need to respect everybody, especially the referees and everybody on the field. If you take the courses, you start to understand that your words have an impact on the players especially. I think all of these community events are just phenomenal opportunities for the children to become a little more acquainted with the true values that they need to have. And as a parent, I've also learned how to be more respectful with regards to other parents on the sidelines, referees, and as well as coaches. Well, my favorite part of today, it was meeting Dwayne. Dwayne, of course, is a legend of the Canadian game. Uh, and he had some uh, great wisdom to uh, impart on the uh, young players. Respect in sport is important because it teaches a lot of aspects of respect. Respect of time, respect of teammates, respect of community, respect for yourself, and respect for your surroundings. And I think sport is a great vehicle to teach respect at all, all aspects, all levels, and no one's ever too old to learn about respect. 
Respect in sport means sportsmanship, and even when a dirty play or anything gets you down, you can get back up and then just treat the other players like, like nothing happened, basically. Uh, respect means to me is uh, always being nice to people and treat people the way you want to be treated. Respect in sport, Sport Check and Ontario Soccer did a phenomenal job today um, at bringing all of the players and parents um, together to understand a little bit better. You know, if you hit a player down, you come, you pick him back up and, and you have a respectful handshake and you go on and that's how we play. There is something quite magical about heading into a new destination. A journey into the unknown. Not alone, but together as a country, as a sport, ready to soar. We are Canada and this is our sport. This is our time. I'm Lizzie and I'm 11 years old. I play for Markham FC and I'm an attacking midfielder. My favorite thing about soccer is learning new tricks and trying them on the field. Today I'm going to be showing you the SRP move. Let's go. Step one is to cross the ball over with your weak foot. Number two, step over the ball with your dominant foot. Step three is to pull the ball back with your weak foot. Step four is to chop the ball behind your weak foot with your dominant foot. And finally, explode with the ball down the field. Now that you know all the steps, try the SRP move for yourself. My proudest soccer moment was when I made the Markham OPDL team. If you're trying to learn new tricks, be creative and don't give up. Hi, my name is Fatlam and I'm 20 years old. I play five-a-side soccer for North East Soccer Soccer Club and I'm a forward. Today I'm going to teach you speed, dribble and change direction tricks. Step 1. Dribble the ball forward. Step 2. Place the inside of the foot and outside of the foot. Alright soccer fans, let's get you set for the fourth quarter kickoff. And remind you that Ontario Soccer is pleased to welcome SportCheck, Canada's largest sports retailer, as its official sporting goods retail partner. Both partners share the goal of inspiring Ontarians to live healthy, active lifestyles by making sport and activity more fun, approachable, and inclusive. With a vast assortment of apparel and equipment and the very best athletic brands in the world, SportCheck strives to help athletes and enthusiasts of all levels succeed. Find out what moves you at sportcheck.ca. Fourth quarter kickoff, we are underway and it's Ottawa South United leading three to two over Brampton SC as you're tuned in to the girls under 14 final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield and a foul called there against Brampton. Choku got hammered hard. And Brampton are fortunate not to get a caution there as laying the shoulder in was Omizi. And she sent a message there with that tackle as Brampton trying to respond now, finding themselves trailing after the goal from Lofthouse put Ottawa in front 3-2. to two. Ball ricochets wide. Billow picks it up for Ottawa. Her pass in, Ammer mishits it, but it's controlled by a teammate. A stocky can't get the clearance. Controlled. Only for a moment by Menard. And the ball knocked out. It'll be a throw in now for Ottawa. Billow gets set to take the toss. Picks out Hanish. She tries to work away from Patterson. Goes back to Billow. Her cross towards goal. And an easy save there for the keeper, Brar. Elliott. Playing it forward for Brampton. Hanish there to knock it down. Yang tries to clear it back, but that pass picked off. And now a 50-50 ensues as getting to it first, just in the nick of time, was Zapavinga. Tracked down here by Logan. Choku closes her with contact. The Brampton fans standing above want to call nothing doing. And then Choku clears the ball right to the hostile crowd. 
It is a hostile environment when you get those fans standing right over top of you. And it's quite a setting here this weekend at the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. I'm sure Gary would be very proud to see the way this competition has evolved. Ball played into the penalty area. Patterson battling for it. It's still contested. Omizi with the shot. She gets tripped up. Nothing doing. Branton won a penalty, but the ball cleared out. That would have been a harsh call against Ottawa. There was contact on Omizi, no doubt, but she got the shot away, and then the contact coming in later never really impact the shot attempt, so Brampton will work from a throw-in. Patterson tries to flick back to the thrower, but that's cleared by Hamish out of touch. 63rd minute of action. If we're tied after the final 80, we go straight to penalties, but... Right now, OSU defending a 3-2 lead. Nice work there by Sorobi. She nearly came clear in possession, but as she opened up space, the ball was picked away. Battered back and forth. There's a shot attempt from Noel Gordon, but too far out. And after one bounce, easily secured by the keeper, Blinn. Pulls it out for Choku. Danielle Choku clears that across the half as Elliott quickly hammers it back. Choku there with the defensive header. Angus, she's contested by Cairo as, check that, actually supplying the pressure there was Johnston for Brampton as Johnston touches back for Elliott, and now it's controlled by Lecky. Johnston starts to work up the touchline. That ball just stayed in play as it dances and sits on the touchline, and now it's knocked out for a Brampton throw. From the throw, Logan Johnston closed down immediately by Hamish. The ball played forward. Lecky can't control. Ottawa trying to knock it with the header was Menard, but she misplays it. And now Patterson takes it across half for Brampton. She plays a good ball out wide for his stocky to run onto. This could be threatening. His stocky taking on Lofthouse. Too heavy a touch, and it's out for a goal kick. His stocky thought she had the corner. She can't believe it. But it's a goal kick here for Ottawa. While these two teams leaving it all on the field. And it's been one heck of a game here in the girls under 14 final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. Ottawa from the goal kick. Choku receiving it short from the keeper and then hamming, hammering it forward. And now it's controlled by Yuan. Her pass intercepted. Patterson supplying the challenge. Sorobi tries to knock forward and it'll be shielded out of touch. Billow thought it was possession to Ottawa, but the throw-in goes to Brampton. And now she's got to scamper back as Istocki catches her out of position. Istocki taking on Lofthouse. Tracking towards the corner, pulls back. But she's closed down by Billow. Draw back now for Sorobi. Yang on her back, and Yang draped all over her, commits the foul, and a free kick now for Brampton SC in the 66th minute. And now Yang's going to get a warning here from the match official. It looks like Estocki gets set to take the free kick as Brampton put six dark jerseys in and around the penalty area. Right-footed ball from the free kick, knocked away on the defensive effort by Yuan, and that's out for a corner kick. So Brampton will have another set-piece opportunity now as Estocki gets set to take the corner. Setting up for an in-swinger. Noel Gordon right on the keeper. Stucky has to change her positioning to take the kick here. Delivers a good ball into the penalty area, but Choku there with a good defensive clearance, and it's out for a Brampton throw. Sorobi tosses looking for Noel Gordon. Headed by an Ottawa player. Knocked only as far as Omizi. She tries a right-footed shot. Fans on it. And now possession taken by OSU Cindy Yang. As she sends a good ball forward. And Gibbs looks to catch them on a counter. Nuala Gibbs working her way out of the corner. Can't quite 
Find clear possession. It's off of her and out for a goal kick. Brar gets set to take the goal kick for Brampton. She plays it short for Elliott, who in turn lays it over to Johnston. Touched intended for Lecky. Closed down by Yang. Loose ball as Lecky tries to take it for Brampton. Nice support by Elliott as she knocks it up the line. Hamish gets a partial block on it. As they try, get it over to Noel Gordon, but Ottawa able to snuff that out, and now Menard takes the loose ball. Makes the pass over to Gibbs, provides the overlap, and receives the ball back on the pass as Menard dancing there against Sorobi. Nearly tripped up, but Menard, while well, she had a partial advantage, it never really materialized, and it's quickly called back for an Ottawa free kick. Good work by the match official there to draw it back after there was no advantage that came from the sequence. And now OSU will put six white jerseys in and around the penalty area to try get a knock on this cross coming in from Angus. Left-footed cross. Tries to catch Bar off her line. It's a brace for Maya Angus. As she goes straight in on the free kick. Brar can't believe it. What a tough day for the Brampton keeper. And it's 4-2 to two for Ottawa South United in the 69th minute. Angus opened the scoring in the second minute of play. She doubles her tally with the brace here in the 69th. And that's the insurance marker Ottawa we're hoping for. As with a little more than 10 minutes of match time remaining, Ottawa South United now lead 4-2 to two over Brampton SC and the girls under 14 final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. Tough sight here as Naya Noel Gordon, the injured player, and hopefully nothing serious here for Noel Gordon. She's been an impact player today for Brampton, striking once with a goal and providing a phenomenal attacking presence all game, but a tough sight here to see her on the turf. And we hope nothing serious and a speedy recovery for the injured Noel Gordon. We'll take this opportunity to remind you that today's OPDL Charity Shield action is fueled by Gatorade, the official sports fuel of OPDL. Rehydrate, replenish, and refuel after the match. Well, there's a great sight to see, and you have to applaud the gutsy effort and the toughness on display right now from Noel Gordon as, at least for the time being, she'll have to come out of this match with the substitution, but good to see her able to get up on her own power and walk off without assistance as... The substitution will come here for Brampton. They'll try make two changes. As they're going to sub out Iman Amar and bring on Vanessa Cairo. And for the time being, they're actually going to play short a player. And now, uh, excuse me, Noel Gordon comes back into play. So good to see her be able to soldier on here for Brampton as they're going to need her and all the offensive power they have now down by two with just 10 minutes remaining in this match. Ball cleared out of play. It'll be a Brampton throw-in. Logan, good toss into the penalty area. Choku heads it clear. Yang battling for possession. Lucky chips it forward. Istaki forces Choku to play it with her hands. And Choku... Is going to get a yellow card here. That's the second time she kicked the ball away. And that time, Danielle Choku goes into the match official's notebook with the caution for time-wasting and unsportsman or unsporting behavior. Four-player wall sets up for Ottawa defensively to try block this free kick as Gabriella Stocky overtopped the ball for Brampton. 72nd minute of action. Brampton puts six attackers towards the back post. 
looking for either a rebound or a flick on from the impending free kick. This Stalky, the lone Brampton player, over top the ball. Four player wall for Ottawa. Blinn stands on her line. This Stalky takes a deep breath, cues up. Right footed ball to the back post. Oh, just cleared away. Wow, oh, what a defensive block there by Choku. Moments after conceding the free kick and getting the caution, she heads away what looked destined to be a sure goal. And Danielle Choku with the defensive header keeps this game at 4-2. Istaki, who took the free kick, now sets up for the corner. 73rd minute of action. Istaki delivers the corner near post. Lofthouse with the defensive clearance from her head. And now Gibbs tries to take on a few defenders but loses it to Sorobi. Her pass ahead for Istaki. Too much weight. That's out for a goal kick. Approaching the final five minutes of match play, Brampton need a goal, and they need one fast here, trailing by two. Goal kick played short. Choku tries the clearance. It gets as far as Angus. And now she finds the overlap option. Good work here by Ottawa. Zapavinga takes it forward. But then her pass picked off, and now Brampton trying to work it over to Johnston, but she can't corral it tight to the touchline, and it's out for a throw-in. 74th minute. Throw by Zapavinga. Makes its way up the field. Quickly knocked back by Elliott. Choku steps in with a big header and a lot of contact on the front of the Brampton player and Lucky, but nothing, excuse me, Logan, but nothing doing. Logan looking for possession now from the throw. Drops it back for Johnson. Her ball, that could be troublesome for the Ottawa back line. As Istaki trying to wrestle it away. Ball ricochets its way over to Patterson. Quick touch by Cairo. Omizi, her through ball, intending to find Logan on the overlap, but that tracks out for a goal kick. And a chance for us to remind you that soon another deserving team will engrave their name into OPDL history and hoist the beautiful Gary Miller Charity Shield trophy tastefully updated by Nothers, the award store. For more than 50 years, Nothers, the award store, has been a leading supplier of awards and recognition products across Ontario, offering complete assistance from program concept planning all the way to product delivery. See how they can help your organization at Nothers.com. Brampton trying to get possession back from the Ottawa goal kick, but Ottawa press it forward, and now Yang running onto it as she tracks there with that challenge Ottawa winning a throw-in after coming in for the defensive clearance was Elliott. So here in the 76th minute, Ottawa maintaining a two-goal lead. As Choku gets set to take the throw. Long toss into the penalty area, but she steps over the line. And they'll give possession away to Brampton for a throw-in. Choku quickly hustles back into her defensive position. As Sorobi looks for a long toss up the line, headed away by Kay. Battle for possession as it's Hanish who comes away with it for Ottawa. Menard, her pass intended for Yang. That's broken up, but Yang quickly gets it back. Hanish, she's got a intended target in Angus, but that was anticipated well by Johnston. Ball ricochets to Angus. Contested here. Through the midfield as Cairo gets chopped down. And it'll be a free kick for Brampton. So Brampton will take the free kick from inside their own side of half. And they'll try to push everyone forward here. Knowing that they need two goals in the next three plus minutes. As we approach the final whistle in the girls under 14 final of the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. Good ball played in. Noel Gordon all alone. Flank stays down. Oh, she fanned on the volley attempt. She had more time and space than she realized. Couldn't quite draw herself back to corral the ball. And in the end, a missed opportunity there for Brampton. After Noel Gordon was completely unmarked from the free kick. Blinn takes the goal kick short. 
Chalku closed down by Logan, but is able to get the ball away. Cairo with the interception. Played to the top of the 18, where a good right-footed attempt by Chalku, but then she hammers a header into Omizi, and this could be danger for Chalku, and, oh, they call the medical staff out immediately on that head-to-head -head challenge. Chalku already on a caution here, and Brampton are appealing for... Well, what is going on with the medic? They're helping out Choku, but no one has come to help out the Brampton player who took the worst of that collision. I think there might be a cut. Certainly, Omizi took the worst of that. No doubt she got hammered by Choku, and now here in the 78th minute, our match official is going to have to try cool the temperature of things here. Uh, as the Brampton players have surrounded her. And most importantly, hopefully nothing serious there for Chiamaka Omizi, the injured player for Brampton. Omizi trying to get back to her feet here with the help of the medical trainer, but she does not look certain about this. Oh, and look, oh, this is not a good sight as well with her left ankle. She cannot put any pressure on that. Oh, my goodness. Well, all we can do is give best wishes and a speedy recovery here for Omizi, who is... Who's found herself in trouble. I think one of the coaches may have received a caution. There's a lot happening here at the same time. And it's hard to know exactly what's going on. As we've been focused on the injured Omizi. She cannot put any pressure on her left ankle. As it is collapsed. And this is not a pretty sight. I'm surprised they haven't brought out a cart for Omizi. Frankly. But again, showing a lot of toughness here, hobbling off the pitch, keeping all the pressure and weight off her left foot. So we hope nothing serious and a speedy recovery there for Omizi, the injured Brampton player. We're going to restart the action here with a free kick for Brampton. No caution on the foul. So Choku... Now, Choku's not on the pitch for the time being, but I believe that's just because she's gotten medical treatment. A four-player wall sets up for Ottawa to defend the kick. They do still have 11 on the pitch. So Choku out of the game with injury, not from an injection. And here goes Istaki to take the free kick for Brampton. Four-player wall defense. Istaki to the back post. Has to go. Oh, no. The flag is up. Flag is up. It will not count. Oh, my goodness. What a roller coaster of emotions for Brampton. As they can hardly believe their luck today. The flag is up. It negates the goal. And this Brampton-centric crowd is ready to erupt here. This is not a good sight. And there's going to be very little to calm these Brampton fans down now. But offside the call. And we restart here with 80 minutes showing on the clock. OSU leading 4-2. to Throw in here for Brampton. Sorobi takes it quickly. Ball knocked out of play. It'll be another Brampton throw-in. Wow. What a few five minutes we've seen here. Again, just a roller coaster of emotion for both teams. Long throw taken into the penalty area. K gets ahead to it. Tracked by Brampton. They cross it in. Flipped on by a defensive header. Contested. And the keeper gets to it. Appeals for a handball, but nothing new in there as Blinn secures it. Even the Brampton coach is appealing to the fourth official. 
but nothing doing. And we're just moments away now from the final whistle. Although with all the stoppages and delays, you would expect a few minutes of added time now. Yang taking it forward for Ottawa. Yang draws to a left foot and just misses on that attempt. As that would have silenced the crowd. We're trying to urge Brampton forward, trailing by two. This match has had a little bit of everything in it. And a lot of drama as we get a handball called and a free kick to come for Brampton on the attacking side of half. And they're going to have to hustle as they take it short. Noel Gordon tries to move it forward. Nothing doing. Johnson, she volleys it towards the penalty area. Is Stocky running onto it? Gets a touch blend with the initial save facing backwards. And then it's cleared out only as far as Noel Gordon. Her shot attempt wide out for a goal kick. Wow. What action. Folks, we still have one more match on the docket today. Up next at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, it's the girls' under-17 final of the Gary Miller Charity Shield 2022 edition. As Brampton here trailing by two in the girls under 14 final to OSU. Desperately trying to play forward. Nothing doing. As now Gibbs takes control. Tries to knock it past Sorobi. Appeals for the final whistle from the OSU bench. As they try to take the ball forward here with Menard. Menard touches over to Yang. Draws to her left foot. Shot attempt low. And a good save there by Brar to drop down and snag that. Brar with her drop kick through midfield. Patterson tries to take control. Angus gets a touch to it. As both teams contesting, and now it's controlled only for a moment by Johnston. In that under-17 girls final, we'll have Markham taking on Whitecaps London. So make sure you tune in at 3.30 p.m. Eastern for that. Of course, we're broadcasting live on the Ontario Soccer Twitch channel. OSU get a clearance. It's out for a Brampton throw. Brampton trying to hustle as a bit of a scrum happening in the crowd once again, but I think nothing too serious. Just a little bit of nonsense with some younger fans more than anything. As now a foul committed there by Hanish and a free kick for Brampton. It's Stocky who, from the last free kick, thought she had pulled her team within one, but the offside flag up, and now Stocky will try again for Brampton. Free kick towards the penalty area, headed away by Angus. That time, Ottawa not supplying a wall. They pulled everyone back for defensive coverage in the penalty area. Patterson tries to wrestle it off the defender. Headed up there by Elliott. Loose ball is stocky, volleys it forward. Sorobi, closed down by the Ottawa defender, knocked out, Brampton throwing. No indication how much longer this is going, but you'd expect the final whistle to be any time, really, as it's controlled at the top of the area. There's a shot attempt, and it's in the back of the net. Oh, Patterson strikes for Brampton, and now a bit of a scrum here between the keeper and Noel Gordon as Blinn trying to hold the ball here. And now she releases, but Brampton strike back on the volley supplied by Isaiah Patterson. And they are within one. This is a crazy game. OSU kick off, ball played forward. Johnston getting a touch for Brampton, wrestled away by Angus. In front for Yang, she had two cracks earlier. Yang takes a lot of contact, but immediately waved off. And now Brar advances it up for Brampton. They got to push everybody forward here. But the final whistle sounds, and despite the last second dramatics, Ottawa South United hold on and claim the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield Championship in the girls under 14 division. 
Today's OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield Auction was fueled by Gatorade, the official sports fuel of OPDL. Rehydrate, replenish, and refuel after the match. Thank you again to our proud partners for today's event, our premier partners, Toronto FC and the CPL. Our program partners, Gatorade, as well as Respect in Sport, Sport Check, Sport Soccer X, Nothers, the award store, and of course, our sport partners, Canada Soccer. Folks, thanks for tuning in. We've got one more game on the docket at 3.30 p.m. Eastern with the girls' under-17 final at the 2022 Gary Miller Charity Shield. My name's Nico Cardarelli. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you at 3.30 Eastern.